Hey gang, Scott here. Uh, today's video, this was prompted by a question that Philip asked in one of the other videos uh, about On1 and its black and white conversion and uh, comparing to a feature that Silver SilverFX has. Uh, you know, Silver SilverFX was, you know, for a long, long time, I, I used to use Silver SilverFX myself. It had this control point technology. I guess it still does. And it would be like you could, uh, you know, kind of draw like a circle or a radial thing in areas of your photo and adjust certain stuff. This was um, kind of in the early days before we had more rich luminosity masking type tools. Uh, the control points were really interesting and helped you refine your, your black and white conversions. And his question was, well, you know, do we have something like that in On1? And while we don't have control points in the silver effects uh, you know, pro type of view, we do have something I think morally equivalent, and it's your local adjustments using the edges shaped masking bug and potentially intersecting that with other masking tools. Let me show you what I mean. All right, I'm in on one effects and I've done my basics here. I've done you know, a dynamic contrast and a black and white conversion. You might be in photo raw and you've done your develop and then you've added a couple of filters. And you're at the stage now where it's all right, it's, it's a nice black and white, but you want to do some more shaping, some more punch to it. And uh, you know, in this photo, I want to really you know accentuate the, the mist. To me, that was what it was interesting when I took this photo, you know, Oregon coast, rugged place, all this, you know, mist and fog rolling down the hills. Um, I cannot wait to get here in November again for, for workshops. But um, what Silver Effects had, you know, kind of coming to the question here, what Silver Effects had is these control points where, let's say I wanted to work on this, uh, this mist here in the middle. You know where I could drop a control point on it. it would kind of have a big old circle, and it had these weird, like you know, like this this arm that would come out, and you could adjust, you know, uh, exposure and highlights and shadows and so forth. Well, we have something very similar with local adjustments. I'll add a local. It's the first one's added for me automatically, and you get the masking bug and choose the edges shape. Okay, I'm just going to drop that on here. Now, of course, I'm zoomed in, so I can't see my bug. But here we go. We have edges. And what edges says is mask away whatever I'm doing over here from the edges. So what's left is the adjustments that I'm making are inside the radius. It's inside this elliptical shape. And so for this mist, let's, uh, let's say we're going to work on the mist. I'm not worrying about the type of adjustment right now. I'm just giving you the, the idea here. It's like, all right, I've got the mist in there. Now, I don't want exposure to be changing negatively. Certainly not. But midtones, I might boost that up a little bit. You know, it's a little bit like that. I might take my shadows back down. So I'm kind of, I'm really, you know, playing, playing contrast here. I could can, I can boost contrast. That's looking, that's, like, that's actually looking really nice. You know, haze can play with that. I don't know if I'd boost it up too much, but all of this is just happening if I open the masking area and I view the mask. This is where all those changes are occurring. Everything outside is not being affected at all. And that's why we, we kind of have this control point. If I take this, you know, over over here, you'll see that mist you know, boosts up. It's almost like a little spotlight or a flashlight. We can shine around and control things. And of course, you have access to all of the other masking tools. So if you need to tidy up the edges or things or something like that where you're not happy with, uh, I'm doing this and uh, let's say just for the video, you can see it. I'm, I'm boosting exposure, but you know, that's, that's growing too much on the outside here. Well, no problem, right? Grab your brush. Uh, maybe I'll use the, the perfect brush here. Turn that on. Open this up. Shift X to paint that out. You know, just kind of get that out of there. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I need the perfect brush for this. Pretty easier and smoother just to kind of fade that away, right? Just, just fade it away. And now I'm getting before and after. Exaggerated for video here because I'm really pushing that exposure. But you get the you get the notion here, right? And you can do this as many times as you need. Uh, let me do a second one here. Add another adjustment the bug, edges, shape, and let's work on these trees down here. All right, I bring my bug down and kind of focus it on 
this corner, maybe rotate that a little bit. And once again, then I'm going to exposure, turn that back to nominal. I want to accentuate the mist. Probably want to push contrast up, push the highlights up, bring those shadows down. Do I want more structure in that tree? You know, just pushing those things around, just a couple of adjustments before, after, before, and after, right? It's a little, a little more drama, you know, downplaying the corner. I'm not so interested in the corner. I do want to have the play with the mist. One more thing that you can do, which I think is, um, it's, it's really more advanced than what we had in Silver Effects. And I'll admit, for you Silver Effects Pro users, if you, if you, you know, I haven't used the software in a bunch of years, but I do remember it had this notion of as you move around, it kind of changed what it was highlighting based on its sample point, kind of doing early you know, luminance or, or range masks. Well, let's add one more adjustment here. And if I start opening this up, with a lumen mask. I'll view the mask. All right, now we're looking at the mask, right? I can take this, leave that mask on. I still have my edges shape. Well, now I drop an edges on here and I have an incredibly nuanced mask that I can move around and adjust the levels on to change what it's affecting. Remember, black conceals, white reveals. So, you know, I'm I'm dialing this in to whatever it is I just want. That's a, that's probably too harsh of a transition. That wouldn't, you know, smoother transitions tend to work better when you're doing these nuanced maskings. But let's say I'm really after the mist in these hills here. All right, let's move that over here a little bit. Something like that. Grab my brush. I'm in erase mode. Already I can take that out. Of the sky that was probably a little bit too harsh let's take our opacity on the brush down a little bit make it a little bigger feather a little bigger you know kind of make that a little more a little more gentle right there at the the edge of the tree line and I'm still just looking at the mask right I haven't done anything to actually change the the photo yet I don't want to do anything in the the ocean per se I just want that mist you know do something like that pop the feather a little bit to smooth it out now I can get to busy on my adjustments, right? So I can boost that contrast. Maybe I want that mist to grow out there a little bit. Maybe I don't. Midtones might come down quick before and after, before, after. A little subtle on the video, but you're, you're, you're popping up those things. But I want you to get the concept here, right? Local adjustment, edges mask, gives yourself a spotlight you can move around, and then Make your adjustments to exposure, highlights, shadows, etc. It's really nice for black and white work as a finishing touches to really shape and craft the final version of your black and white. So the black and white filter can do quite a bit, but uh, you know you're probably wanting to use it globally because you're converting to black and white. Yes, it has masking, and yes, you could do more with it. But I like to use black and white. Get my tonality for the photo as a whole good. And then take a look at local adjustments with this technique I showed to shape and fine-tune fine, uh, fine -tune it. Philip, thanks for the question. Uh, I hope this gives you a little more insight into the, the, the comments we were sharing back and forth in YouTube. And if you've got questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.